Hello friends, welcome to Suman vs. Human. Hope you are having a great Monday. On the show, I have a very special guest today. She is Tanya Balsara from Mumbai. Tanya is founder of Tanya Computer Center. Tanya Computer Center is an amazing organization which will be knowing more about it in detail just in a moment. Before that, welcome Tanya ji on Suman vs. Human. Hi Suman, thank you so much for doing this with me. It's all my pleasure, Tanya ji. Tanya Computer Center. It's not yes. just about one, two, three, four. You are running 14 branches all over the country. <laughs> what actually happening in there? What is Tanya Computer Center? So, in short, it is a computer center that imparts computer training to the visually impaired. And apart from computer training, we also run a class on spoken English and personality development because we feel it is the overall personality also that is important when you go for a job. Yeah. So we try to organize workshops for them. So recently we conducted an offline workshop on self-confidence and anything that would help them, that we feel that would help my fellow visually impaired, we organize such workshops. So right now, as we speak on the weekends, we are running a, a workshop on the use of Google Meet, Zoom and Teams. Mm. And then in the past, we've had a workshop on the use of uh, Google Drive, Docs, uh, Google Form and stuff like that. Then mm. uh, earlier, we had a group discussion. So, you know, there are various activities we organize. And then apart from that, of course, we also have this uh, spoken English class. So the spoken English class is online. It is open for any visually impaired from anywhere in India. And uh, my computer training is offline, whether it's in Mumbai or it's in other parts of India, our centers work offline. Mm -hmm. We started in Mumbai in 2006. And uh, we started it at an uh, industrial home for the blind, which is just opposite my colony. Mm. And it is all thanks to the then trustee, Mr. Barjo Thanawala, that we could start it over there. Mm. And then, unfortunately, there were some problems there, so we had to discontinue. And then we relocated, and now we run the center in Mumbai from Malcolm Bark. That's where I live. Then in 2000... years is a long journey. Yeah. 18 years, 14 branches. That's an amazing growth, Tanya ji. All thanks to my family. There is a Madison Resource Foundation that uh, has adopted us as their corporate social responsibility. And our mission at TCC, that is Tanya Computer Center, is to make every visually impaired Indian computer literate. So keeping this in mind, we have started these centers. We are taking baby steps, but we hope to achieve our mission, surely. <laughs> what made you to burn your hands into computer training? What is the idea behind it? This was in 2004, around 2004-2005. I one day in the evening got a call from a gentleman named Mukesh Jain. And uh, he asked me, would you be able to solve my doubts? So I said, I have not done this ever, but uh, I will give it a shot. So then he used to come to me on uh, sometimes, you know, alternate days, sometimes once or twice a week. And then that's how this gave my family the idea of setting up a computer training center so that more people could benefit at one time. Yeah. Then we contacted the trustee of MNB Home. And at that time, uh, I mean, he, he is, like I said, the ex-trustee. And he lives in Malcolm Bath. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we can do this. So that's how we started. How about you? Like during your education, how literate are you in computers? And what do you think, Tanya ji? Is the problem of illiteracy solved in India? 
No, no. The reason we got into or we decided to involve ourselves with computer training for the visually impaired is because it is a complete uh, life changing experience. You know, once we know to use the computer, we can definitely work. We can definitely earn a good salary and, uh, uh, you know, be independent. Finan- we, it gives us financial independence. And that is, we all know, very important today. And then, of course, the knowledge of computers is, 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 is an eye-opener. It gives us access to an amazing world. So that's how, uh, uh, that is why we, do, uh, we are into this. And like I said, it's not for us, for TCC, it's not just computer training. It's overall, uh, you know, d- development. So I, I definitely prefer offline training, even though times are changing and, you know, everything has become virtual. I definitely prefer offline because it's a, it's a different experience for the students. It, it, it helps them build their confidence. It helps them change their approach because and there are many visually impaired who are late blind and therefore may be dejected who may have given up feeling hopeless so when they interact with others they know that you know they are not alone there are people like them Mm. and we are all there for one another so it gives them a sense of belonging you are teaching computers, you are also training them for life skills and soft skills, stuff like that, which which is actually very important for employment. Yes. I ask you a question, Tanya. Yes. You are successful in training these people uh, with all these very essential skills which is required for employment. Yes. But what do you think? Is there enough employment options available in India for people with disability? I would say things are a lot better now uh, compared to what they were earlier. So now to begin with, banks uh, employ a lot of visually impaired and slowly the private sector is also uh, opening its doors to hiring the visually impaired. In fact, before your call, I was talking to someone Mm. and uh, he was telling me about an opening uh, they are looking for people with disabilities hmm. in Mumbai. Hmm. So I think it is. It it could get better, of course, but it is way better than what it was earlier. And I believe that it, this is what I tell my students also that if if we are equipped with our skill sets, you know, if we if we know English, if we have completed at least our graduation and we know computers, then we have a very high chance of gaining, uh, uh, you know, employment. But by not being graduates, by not learning computers, we are in a way, I would say, digging our own grave. So computer education, you know, at least a graduate degree are very important today. Accepted things are getting better. You accept that uh, things are not perfect yet, right? But there is a lot uh, of awareness that needs to be created. So even today, uh, just two days ago, one of my students told me that she had gone for an interview. Hmm. She doesn't know the computer, of course, Hmm. So, but she's partially sighted. So she had gone somewhere for an interview Hmm. and then um, that that person, the, the person who was interviewing her, just, you know, was so reluctant to hire her because Mm. uh, he didn't know what work she would be able to do. And also he thought he he would, she would not perform as well as the, as her sighted counterpart. Mm -hmm. So Mm. then he rejected her. Mm. But then that's not the end of it, right? I mean, there is rejection in various uh, Rejection even uh, is people common for everyone, but for people everyone, with disability, yeah. for the purpose of their disability, they reject. That's bad. Yeah, but then it's. I think we need to uh, take it in our stride, and and there there are ways of overcoming it in the sense that uh, I I do tell them that when we go for an interview, it is also 
up to us on how well we are able to convince the person at the other end of the table you know mm-hmm. so and all this you also learn with uh, practice you learn over a period of time so i am we are definitely in favor of computer literacy how many are employed right now when i talk about disability like what is the percentage of what is the so number so to give you an uh, to give you an idea yeah. since 2006 till date we've huh. trained across all our centers we've trained uh, when i say we i mean uh tcc yeah. has trained over a thousand students yeah and roughly 800 750 800 of them have uh, are employed wow in the so private person yeah great i'm talking about my students yeah, huh? yeah, tcc yeah. students yeah. yeah so all of them are not in the of course uh, in, in the private sector most hmm. of them are in the public sector hmm. but some of them are also in the private sector let's talk about the legislation the government side of it okay do you think that government is uh, providing uh, enough employment opportunity for the persons of disability or let's also talk about uh, uh, private companies are they providing enough job opportunities for people with disability or do you think that it should still improve so i think uh, as far as the public sector goes they are they are trying hard and uh, as far as the private sector is concerned i think it's just a lack of awareness so we are hoping to have some awareness workshops amongst corporates so that uh, you know they get an idea of what the visually impaired can do so like i was telling you before your call this gentleman who i was talking to hmm. they are not aware of what people with disabilities can do so they are going to hire pwds but before that they have created a, a form to get an idea of this of our skill sets of our education and stuff like that so that they know what kind of work we will be able to do correct me if i am wrong tanya ji yeah. i heard and i learned that only 5% of the persons of disabilities are employed in this country i at least feel uh, so you know i am on on a lot of whatsapp groups hmm. and of late there are so many vacancies that i'm getting to know about you know of late hmm. like hmm. at least i get to know about one vacancy a week and this is for people with disabilities whether it's visual impairment or people with locomotor disabilities so let's yeah. hope and pray things get better that's all i can say <laughs> tanya ji i still see lot of people in this country who are not yet familiar with the life skills or soft skills who are not yet familiar with the computer literacy stuff who are not familiar yes. with the technology and stuff like that okay yes. though yes. ngos like you though organizations like you are putting their hard and money time efforts you are dedicating right. your entire life for the welfare of people with disability but still we come across so many persons with disability who are still who are yet to come and take up this opportunity so yeah, where yeah. is the gap yeah so uh, you know even in a city like mumbai there are so many people who who are in their 20s or 30s and complete their graduation at that age because they are not aware hmm. of uh, schools for the blind and uh, stuff like that or national association for the blind it's all to do with i think uh, lack of awareness and that is why as far as possible we are trying to reach out to as many cities and towns as possible to start a computer center so like my centers in gujarat there is one center in amdavad but the other centers are in small towns of gujarat so it's not that our training is only in cities because these small towns also need computer literacy right 
Yes, of course. We have a computer center in uh, in Katni, which is in MP. Hmm. It is about an hour away from uh, Bhopal. Hmm. So, so the teacher was uh, asking me there. Now they are computer literate. What about jobs for them? Hmm. So I was telling her it is up to you guys now. A little bit of awareness, talking to people around, you know, talking yeah, to yeah, yeah. call centers around about how visually impaired can be employed yes and what is the work that they can do i spoke to many ngos like yours yes. everyone commonly say that uh, there is still lot of awareness has to be provided they, they, yeah. you know there is lot yeah. of work still needs to be done in, when it comes to spreading awareness stuff like that but where is the end that's really bothering me like how long we will talk about spreading the awareness i think uh, it it has to be done uh, at a larger level yeah, i guess yeah, yeah yeah i feel not just people with disability not just uh, the ngos who are working with people with disability in fact entire country all country. the departments all the legislations all sectors should come together, come together. to spread across uh, to spread right. awareness across the country. awareness yeah right. unless that is not going to happen nothing uh, we could do because the awareness thing will be a top point in our agenda every time yeah. whenever we you know uh, think or talk anything about disabled welfare tanya ji i'm super interested to know about your personal life like how all this thing started i completed my uh, 10th standard my ssc from a uh, school in andheri that's Uh, in the suburbs that's hmm. close to our house and after that i went to saint xavier's college in south mumbai hmm. and i finished my graduation i completed my ba hmm. and after that i enrolled for so it was per, so perfectly timed my last uh, ba exam was on 12th june 2000 hmm and my computer course started on 16th august 2000 hmm. so i think the this this computer course that i enrolled for was what turned my life hmm. or it's all thanks to that hmm. and then of course a lot lot of uh, people around us like i told you our trustees then uh, even mukesh jain who who was in a way my first student hmm. and then also uh, along the journey there are so many people who support us all the time cited volunteers and of course the most important the biggest support for me my family hmm. and people around so it's all thanks to everyone around that uh, we are where we are are you disabled tanya ji yes i am what kind of disability you have i have a visual impairment i am a, a case of retinitis pigmentosa though you are blind you are bringing vision to the thousands and thousands of <laughs> blind people all over the people, country yeah. we are trying we are branches. trying you know uh, when when i uh, when i finish a batch and then uh, not just in mumbai but uh, when any uh, student uh, finishes the course whether it's in mumbai or in any of our other centers and we get to know that uh, you know he or she has gained employment hmm. that satisfaction is yeah. so amazing i have no f- words to express that uh, feeling you know it is it is more exciting for me i think than the student <laughs> yes because you are the concrete right you are the foundation <laughs> Tanya ji team Suman versus Suman salutes you for the great work you are doing. Uh, thank you thank you and i heard a lot about all the amazing stuff that you are also doing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> giving an opportunity to visually impaired and people with other disabilities. Tanya ji are you only deal with people with uh, vision impairments or uh, uh, TCC is for everyone? No it's for people with visual impairment. any plans of also bringing in people with other disabilities into tcc not at the moment we haven't really given that a thought unfortunately 
other kinds of disability is suffering a lot in this country because of scarcity of ngos so uh, you know as far as computer training goes uh, you know uh, people who can see hmm. they find it very difficult to use screen readers yeah they prefer using the mouse yeah yeah so to so th- therefore uh, you know since i am visually impaired it's easier for me to or i would say it's easier for a visually impaired to teach another visually impaired yeah rather yeah. than uh, to teach a sighted person yeah yeah or a person with other disabilities because that person is able to see right but yes, yes in in terms of uh, we could definitely think of uh, some Because other activities I'm for so people with disabilities i'm so fascinated with the kind of presence you have in this country 14 locations is a big network uh, thank you you can thank benefit you so much. a lot of persons of with disabilities in this country if you can also accommodate other kinds of disabilities into this disabilities DCC. Yeah. we will definitely give that a thought thank you for <laughs> planting the seed in my mind <laughs> anya ji now elections are just around the corner in this country right when we talk about uh, elections or politics and you know i'm sorry but i'm not interested i'm not into politics no, at no, all no it's not about core politics anya ji when we think about <laughs> politics no political party will really bothered you know about or care about uh, uh, people with disability we are never a part of their manifesto right what message you would like to give out for whoever coming in future like whoever party is going to take the stand what mm. message you would like to give to them regarding people with disability regarding the welfare of people with disability so i would say not just to them but i would say to any non disabled person i would say that uh, keep an open mind towards people with disabilities don't be sympathetic towards us because we don't need sympathy we need empathy and also we are uh, our disability is is not that it's not like sighted people don't have any shortcomings everyone has some weakness everyone has some strengths so just because we are visually impaired or just because we are disabled doesn't make us any less than our sighted counterparts is what i believe a disabled person needs to be given a chance you can't just uh, say no to him or her because he's disabled that is very very unfair according to me tanya ji yes. if someone wants to provide any job opportunities for the students who are going through training programs in your organization like how do they reach you and how, so how shall they contact you they could write to me uh, my email address is tanya tanya at tanya computer center dot com tanya at tanya computer center c e n t r e dot com the details are in the description listeners so you can check it out and of Bye. course if any yeah. of your listeners specially visually impaired have any thing if they feel they want to reach out to me i am more than happy to help them so it's it's you know it's also many people also reach out to us for volunteers for recording notes for reading notes so whatever possible we organize do these people need to pay you anything to get the no, training no we don't charge them but we uh, we take from them a deposit a refundable deposit of 500 and which is returned once they finish the course so we have a convocation ceremony for them we call a chief guest and uh, you know the chief guest basically may or may not be disabled someone who has an inspiring story to share hmm. and then the certificates are given to the candidates who've completed the course and along with that we refund the deposit to them oh tanya ji you are doing it all for free yes it's an excellent opportunity for people yeah. with disability hey, thank you thank S- you so much so you 
are cordially invited to TCC when you are in Mumbai next. Sure, Tanya. And yeah, for I that matter, love. all your listeners. <laughs> yes, of mm. course. So, Tanya yeah. ji, I have this question for all my guests on Suman vs. Human. And here it is. And you don't have any option to say no. You have to answer this. Okay. <laughs> If I give you all the superpowers in your hands, Tanya ji. So, right. what that you are going to do with it and what change you are going to bring in this country using your superpowers? Mm, uh, if, if, there is, uh, if there is one thing that I could change amongst my fellow VIs would be to uh, make all of them more confident, more positive and uh, employable. Great. It was awesome And talking to you, Tanya Ji. Yes, thank you so, thank you so much, much for giving me this Likewise. opportunity to host you on Suman vs. Human. Uh, thank you. And all the very best to you also. And all the very best to all your listeners.